Welcome everyone to Healing Wednesdays and the Circle of Twelve. I am Lee Carroll. And I'm Monica Morani. Well, here we are yet again. Every Wednesday evening of the year, we come together with special guests, questions and answers, discussions, meditations, and channeling. This is our once a month free program, so YouTube subscribers, welcome. Also, welcome to all of you who are joining us for the first time from anywhere on that planet, and our diagnostics show that there are many of you. A special welcome to the members of our Healing Circle of Twelve program. We love you guys so much. Thank you for being part of our beautiful community. And for those of you who are the Circle of Twelve members, you get one of these programs every single week of the year. If you're not a member but you follow the Circle of Twelve on YouTube, well, guess what? This is your 21st free program. If you are a member, however, this is your program number 81. I can't believe how that has happened. All of our members that receive the Healing Wednesday program that we have ever done, they have a library that is building all the time. In addition, our members get many other extras, including a full index of every program. And, of course, the YouTube library is also building. This library never expires, uh, folks, and you can watch these programs as long as you wish. So, YouTube subscribers, take a look at some of the great programs from last year with some very prominent guests. So we're now going to move to our question and answer section of the program, and many of you have been asking the same question about the term old souls. There seems to be a lot of confusion due to the statement that your soul is eternal. But if your soul is eternal, how can there be a new soul and an old soul? Well, even though I may have answered some questions regarding this in prior programs, it's always good to review a subject that is still being asked. What we face in many of these questions is that most of you have not seen the past membership programs. I'm talking mostly to the YouTube audience at the moment. Now, in those uh, weekly programs that you have not seen, we do a whole lot of Q&A every single week. So I'm going to address this once again for you. This is a free show, so the majority of you viewers have access to 25% of the total shows. So I'm saying this again just to uh, plug... <laughs> <laughs> the weekly membership to say maybe if you'd like to you could uh, join us and have access to all of these um, questions and answers but here is the answer to the question about old souls those who have asked this question are correct our soul is eternal in fact it's you know it, it has no beginning and no end and according to cryon uh, we are actually part of the creative source. You and I are. The creative source energy being God. So you are a multidimensional consciousness. We all are. So how can there be an old and a new soul designation with that kind of a definition? The answer is simple. Cryon is relating this name, old and new soul, to your time on earth. That's the difference. And it fully explains how you could be an old soul with many lifetimes on earth or a new soul who may have just arrived to be a human on the planet. That's because our population growing almost exponentially. Our souls are the ones Crian tells us um, are usually called old souls, the ones listening and, um, and uh, the ones presenting here. Uh, and, and, and that definition of old soul is basically for those who have been on the, pro on, the, on the programs here that we present, of course, to you, and the ones who are listening. In many... Uh, it, in many cases, it takes many, many lifetimes on the planet to figure everything out to the extent that there is now interest in the self-discovery and esoteric things. That's what Crine has taught. It's almost like a, a school of consciousness where we start and then lifetime after lifetime we become wiser, there's more experience. So, old soul, thank you for listening uh, today as we present to you as old souls. And since this is a free show on YouTube, I just have to say this. There are always those who are watching the crazy channeling guy for fun. That's me. And uh, so for them, this is a fall down, funny, ridiculous show. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say that unless I knew it was true, that there are those who uh, watch and, and uh, have a good time for that reason. So if that's you, I have a message for you. You are a new soul. And you're still unaware of your incredible value to this planet your magnificence 
and your ability to change your lives, live longer, and make a compassionate change happen on earth. So regardless of whether you're a new or old soul, we love you equally and we hope that you can feel our love being transmitted to you right now. Our next question comes from Gilad. Gilad is from Israel, Shalom. And Gilad is asking, is it possible to energetically invite those who are dear to me into the circle of 12? Gilad, the answer is, you ready? Yes, yes, and yes. I want to be emphatic. The circle of 12, as we give it every week, as, as a meditation, a profound visualization, it's only an example of what a human can do in this new energy. We have so much more we can do. I, I'd invite all those you love to be there with you. So yes, and give intent that they may, they may see that they can also participate in their own kind of circle of 12, call it whatever they wish. Although some may disagree, this energy that we present is available to every single human on the planet, no matter what their belief system. It's private. It's not, it's not a doctrine. It's, um, it's loving energy. It's you working with your own soul, no matter how you were taught to worship. So bringing those you care about into your own soul's energy also goes right into what we call the field, the quantum field, something that's all around us and everyone on the planet, a multidimensional field. It's really a kind of process you got used to when you would pray for others. It's not new. It just has a far more powerful perspective to it. Many prayers today are being directed at those in trouble and pain. There are probably more today than just a few months ago, and they really need it. So by including all those within your own circle of 12 experience, you're right at the source of all love and compassion, making a difference to everyone you think about, including yourself. Thank you for asking that great question. And it was a great question, and we want to now move to two similar questions on one theme, and the theme is our beloved animals, our pets. The first question asked is from Karen. She's in Florida in the US, and Karen is saying that I am interested in knowing about our beloved pets. We have all suffered the anguish when we've had to say goodbye to them, and I would feel better knowing what happens to them. Are we ever reunited with them? I have heard a multitude of answers, but none that really resonate. Are there pets in the fifth dimension? And then we have Chris from Vermont in the US who is asking, do animal friends who pass over stay with us energetically the way that our loved humans do? Such a, a wonderful question, and this is something that I really enjoy talking about. I actually did a video that gave a full explanation of all of the answers to those questions about a year ago on Cry on Facebook area, but I would love to talk about it again for this group, especially for those, those uh, watching on YouTube. Animals, all of them, have different roles to play on this planet, and Cryon tells us that most of them exist to help humanity. But the ones we have in today's culture, which are the most precious to us, are our pets. Be aware that this could be a mouse or a horse. <laughs> it's about the consciousness of the animal and the bond of love with a human being. Bottom line, many are here to love us unconditionally, and they become different esoterically because of this bond, this love. So the buffalo in the field who never sees a human being is very different from the buffalo who becomes a pet. Yes, there, there are, really are some. As humans, we are very linear thinkers, and we want all the spiritual rules to be absolute and linear. Our thinking is that animals either all have souls or they don't, or they reincarnate or they don't, and th that's how we think. But we don't really like a situation where some do and some don't. Welcome to Cryon's world where love and compassion and human energy creates a very special condition with the love for an animal. Your pets, ready? They have reincarnate ready souls. Now, you can stop for a moment and laugh if you want to. Cats and dogs in particular, Crying teaches, don't um, have that, and, they, and also they don't live very long. We, we may get 15 years out of them, but, and, and that's just an average, but that's about it. So if you are a lover of animals, you've experienced probably the heartbreaking loss of not just one, but maybe a few. 
Here's the good news, really good news. Crime tells us that they know you. Of course they do. They have a love affair with you, and they want to continue that love with you even when they pass on. This is actually their reincarnate ready soul. Love has made the difference. If you can really cognize this and get through the grief of a loss, go looking for them. And Crian talks about that. They want to be found. They do. And, they, and there's a setup to be in your area so you can find them. Now, here's where it gets nonlinear. Synchronicity will take you right where you need to be. If you believe these things that we talk about in the field and synchronicity and quantum consciousness, don't look for the same animal or color or breed. That's just what we want to do, and that's linear. Mostly, they want to be found, so they'll be similar. But, ready? Sometimes a bulldog wants to be a poodle, <laughs> believe it or not. And some are going, no, no, that can't be. Uh, so be open. Please be open. But try. Go to the animal shelters or areas you trust that may have them and look. How will you know? Ready? Look into their eyes and they will know you. Wow, we've had so many talk about this. This has been uh, situation after situation. Uh, folks, it happened to me. And it was spectacular. I was so, uh, so sad after my little mini died and uh, I found my dog again and it had the same strange habits, really, not just dog habits, but strange habits that my previous precious mini had and even more. I knew it was the same one. I knew it. And the love affair continued. I hope this helps with some of you who really needed to hear this today. Thank you, Lee. And I think part of what I also want to share is that We've had so many examples from people writing emails into us about their stories of how they have found their beloved animal that passed over and then they, they found them again. And really, the energy of your love, the energy of your love, whether it's for an animal or for friends and family, that energy never dissipates. It's always existing. It's always there. It, it's an energy that gets created and it's never destroyed. And so trust that that energy of the love you have for the animals, they want to come back and be with you and just trust the process that when it's appropriate, when it's time for you to reconnect and find that, it will happen. So now we're going to move into a meditation before a channeled message from Cryon. And I'm inspired by those of you who have been asking about your beloved pets. And I'm inspired by those who are asking about the term old soul. So we now know that an old soul is someone who has had a life expression on the earth many times. We incarnate and experience life and then come again and again and again. An old soul is referring to planet earth. Of course, your soul is eternal. So let's use those terms of old soul and beloved pets as we go into a meditation. So I invite you to close your eyes and relax your body. Relax your face. Relax your shoulders, your arms and hands. Relax your thighs, your knees, your calves, your feet. And feel any tension within your body. Just dissolve and melt away. And in this moment of relaxation, contemplate how many times you may have been on this planet and indeed if you are tuning in and listening to this you have had several lifetimes on our beautiful planet earth and I invite you to think about how many animals you may have had as pets during each and every lifetime that you have shared on this beautiful planet earth. And that energy of the love affair you have for each animal you've experienced, it is still there in the unified field from which we came from and go back to. 
And so I invite you to pull forward the energy of each and every single animal that you have had in every lifetime on planet Earth. And for some of you, there are many animals now coming forward to greet you and say, hello, we remember the beautiful partnership we shared with you. And so just spend a little time saying hello and welcoming in all of those pets that you have had in all the lifetimes that you have existed. And they have come to be with you for one reason, to support you in your journey on earth. As you go through levels of awareness, that has been their role, to love you unconditionally so that you can receive the message that you are magnificent and that your very existence on the planet matters. And know that this communication that you have now opened with all of your loved animals from the past is an invitation for them to energetically be with you for every breath that you continue to take from this moment forward. They are here in love and support of you. And they are joyful and happy in this renewed partnership that you are now creating. And so from that place of timelessness and love, let us now welcome in the messages from Cryon. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. I am so aware of all of those souls, those eternal souls, listening, some watching, right now. The four teaching channels that will be presented this month all have a theme, and the theme is timing. Timing is such a huge subject and has so many attributes and levels. We've even spoke of this in the timing of your incarnations before in channels, but there's so much more. Those who are interested perhaps in, in your own process and how many times you've been on earth and what makes a difference and how it works, it's all been, been covered in previous channels and all of them are available for you on my partner's website. I told him many years ago, make all channels available. These four, slightly different, some of the information has been presented, but we're putting it all together today. Timing. Are you aware that right now, if you are hearing these words, the timing is perfect? If you're hearing the words and you feel something that says, I'd like to hear some more, that's perfect. That's the energy that is being presented. I want to show you and tell you about the timing, even of you listening to this right now. My voice is not just my voice. It carries with it something else. Invitation. Compassion. Recognition. Love. There's an energy that's being transmitted into the field right now that stays and stays and stays so that no matter when a human being listens to this channeling, they'll feel it. This is the multidimensional aspect of timing. Sometimes being at the right place at the right time, you'll think is unique in the universe. There was no other time that this would have occurred. That's not necessarily true. We'll tell you about that as well in this series of four channelings. Next week, we're going to talk about something else that's, that's timing that you might be interested in. 
and I would love you to know more about it. And that will also be available eventually for everyone. And here is the question we're going to cover next week. And that is this, what's happening on earth? Why is there a difference? Does history really repeat itself? But right now, today, I want to tell you about the timing of where you are in your world, this linear world you're in, where you have a date and you have a time of day and you are born in these times which we are calling the shift. Now, if you're new to this term or any of these things that I'm speaking of, we've taught about it so many times. Study, if you wish to, the precession of the equinox. Study, if you wish to see it in a more summarized form, the calendar of the Mayans. They created what they call creation calendars, each one 5,125 years long, approximately. And that corresponded to this precession of the equinox, which is a, an earth wobble, which has a 26,000-year cycle. The calendars within that cycle, many cycles, is what the Maya detected from their observatories and watching the stars. But their prediction... In 2012, they would have to take that calendar off the wall. It was the end of that long, long count that they had and put up a new calendar. Now, they weren't the only ones. Many indigenous predicted the shift, a change of consciousness that is potential because human beings can do whatever they want to in free choice. But this one, this one was a bit different because it talked about the potential change of humanity. In other words, a conscious shift of all consciousness on the world. Subtle, but it would result in eventually having a higher consciousness worldwide. You're already on that target. We'll talk a little more about that next week. But the questions about this precession of the equinoxes is about the timing of it and the energy shift at the crux of it. It occurred in 2012, December 21. And there would be those who say, well, that's when it started. Actually, that's not when it started. It started 18 years before that. And it lasts 18 years after that. So what I'm saying is you are right in the middle and then there's some left over. And this particular 36-year window has energy within it, which is different from any that has ever been on the planet. Look around you. Do you find odd things happening in your news? And the answer is yes. Unsupported by the consciousness of the planet, things are happening. And we've told you more about that. This shift that we have told you many times about is the increase of light on the planet. It's a metaphoric. It doesn't mean illumination. It means a higher consciousness. And in that, the consciousness that has always been here, which has been a darker conscious, a consciousness of war, that consciousness is starting to diminish. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Even as you give this channel, war is happening. How could you say that? I will tell you this. What is the response to it? That's what I want you to look at. The darkness of low consciousness is still here on the earth, and it will flail, and it will, will yell and scream and do anything it can to keep the light from being here. Have you seen any of that? Have you seen something that looks like 1943 to you? at this moment in time? And the answer is yes. And you see what I'm saying. Old energy on this planet, whether it's in governments or leadership or individuals, it doesn't matter, is going to kick and scream when it sees light starting to come and change the ratio of light and dark because all manner of things will occur. Corruption will be seen. Things that are inappropriate 
will be then seen and dealt with. Things that have always been there will start to change. Biases that have always been there, bigotry always been there, will start to be called out and have to change. Darkness, dark energy, which has always been at the forefront and proud of it and showing, will have to go into hiding. All metaphors, dear ones, to tell you light is winning and you can see it in the reaction of humanity. There's a 36-year window that has attributes right here in this precession of the equinoxes ending approximately 2030. And in that 36-year window, you've already made strides. You're making them now. But there is more opportunity before now and the end of this window that allows greater change, inventions, to happen. This is the time for inventions, dear ones. This is the time for cleanup, dear ones. This is the time to establish what you want, not just individuals, but in countries, in planetary-wide, what you want. And it also includes a greater, more profound awareness of your partnership, your partnership with Gaia. And what you have done with the planet, what you can do for remediation on the planet, and what you can do to sustain that partnership with integrity. That's just one of many things. Your relationship to each other and what you think is appropriate and hasn't been in the past with humanity or society or cultures is also being questioned. The church itself, the big church, is also being questioned. And that is also something that we have spoken of even back in 2013. These things are starting to move, and you get to see them. They move slowly, dear ones. Don't look at what happened this week or last week and decide that's what humanity does. Take a broader brush to this and take a look at 20 years ago, even 25, and then take a look at today. Take a look at the reactions today of what is going on the planet and the reactions 30 or 40 years ago you'll find that it's very, very different. This is what we speak. We encourage you to move on the things that right now, intuitively, you're processing. You have projects individually, so many of you, that you've thought of so long that perhaps you will do. Or maybe you've even tried them in the past. And these projects didn't work, perhaps, if you tried them. Now it's time. Timing. That's what we're talking about. Timing. The energy is different today than it was even two years ago. The energy may be now correct and ripe with promise for the things you're thinking about. Perhaps the healing center, the book you want to write, or the things that you have wanted to do in your personal life that needed doing. This is the time. There's no better time than this, especially for the old soul listening to this right now, who is aware of what I just said, and it's tweak their interest because I'm talking right to them. It's time to do some of these things that you know you have that will help others, either one at a time or in groups that will help others. There's never been a better time for you to talk to many through that which you call your social media. And you might say, well, they're not going to be interested in what I have to say. Oh, you might be surprised, wise one. There's interest for everyone. If you found a key that helped you, there will be others that need to help, that need help, that, that want to know what you've done. This, all this channel is about the timing of you on earth at this moment. There's so much here, dear ones, so much here for you. I'm crying in love with you all. Light is winning. Watch it. And so it is.
And very softly bring your awareness back into your body. If you've had your beautiful eyes closed, I invite you to open your eyes. And now that you are slowly shifting back into the room, back into your body, we're going to move to the next part of our program, which is interviewing a special guest. And this next guest is truly incredibly special to both Lee and I, and his name is Dr. Clint Rogers, and he's Zooming to us from Nepal. So I just want to make sure Clint is there with us. Clint, are you there? <laughs> I'm here. So good to be with you in uh -huh. this beautiful space. <laughs> well, we have been so excited to have you back. And I just want to let everybody know that Dr. Clint was on our Healing Wednesday program last year in November, but it was for the members only. And after his interview, Lee and I absolutely knew that we wanted to feature him again for this free show. His work is astonishing. And we have experienced it personally for ourselves. And actually, Lee and I are participating in some of his ancient secret protocols. So the book Ancient Secrets from a Master Healer, exceptionally good one, very compelling read, is accompanied by web links to very helpful and fun videos. Monica and I have actually purchased and given over 20 of these books, maybe now, after, even after um, this time, um, and, and we've given to, the friend, to friends for five months. But first, let me tell you a little a bit about him. Dr. Dr. Rogers, PhD, was an award-winning university researcher who had no time for alternative medicine until he encountered the ancient healing work of Dr. Pakaj Niram while desperately, really, searching for a solution to keep his own father alive. Now, Dr. Clint spent over 10 years traveling with this legendary master healer documenting many of the ancient secrets and thousands of the healing stories. Now, in his highly acclaimed book, which I happen to have a copy <laughs> right here, <laughs> Ancient Secrets of a Master Healer, this is where he shares some of those incredible stories and the secrets. Now, the book has been translated into over 30 languages. It describes the unbroken lineage of master healers that goes back over 2,000 years to Jivika, who was the physician for the Buddha. Within this book is the six secret keys of life to create and maintain vibrant health, unlimited energy, and peace of mind at any age. Five months ago, we interviewed Dr. Clint on this very eve, this, uh, the Wednesday that we do it now, and it also happened to be the very night that he was <laughs> to receive knighthood from Italian <laughs> royalty. Now, I'm just pause for a moment. Knighthood from the Italian royalty. He really did. Let me show you just a couple of photos from this amazing honor. So as you look at this um, and this wonderful time, this knighthood was in recognition of all the healing help that he had freely given to humanity. It was, it was easily seen and noted by so many. I especially like this photo, the knighting sword next to his outstanding and life-changing <laughs> book. So that happened like right after the show. Clint is a one of a kind, walking testimony to the power of love and compassion today. Dr. Clint, my friend, welcome to this show. <laughs> it's so good to be with you. I feel like today, and I, I, I really have a feeling, I got so excited about being here with you and know that everyone who's listening, you're here for a reason mm -hmm. and that there's going to be something today that perhaps we share or maybe something that we don't even share, but some knowing that can come to you, some secret that can change your life forever. And I'm so honored to be here and grateful to be with you both. Before, before we go any further, I want to hear a little bit of your story that people have not heard of the YouTube audience we have. But before that, it just gives a glimpse of who you are and what you do. What was your day like today? <laughs> hmm. uh, I, today, I mean, it's the, the, um, the times in which I speak 
with you are so, I don't know, synchronistic or beautiful. Today is actually New Year's in Nepal. And uh, I've been coming for over 10 years with Dr. Naram, the, the master healer that, you know, the book is about. And he always wanted us to visit these orphan homes and make sure that we support these orphan kids. And uh, a big part of the ancient secrets is asking, what do you want? And so um, today I asked the orphan kids, what do you want? And they said, we want to go to a water park. And they'd never, ever been to a water park ever before. So I got a bus together and we took the kids there. And it was so humbling. I didn't realize that they didn't ever have a, a swimsuit before. You know, we were always taking care of their food, their school fees, different things like this. But on the way, we had to get their first ever swimsuit. It was the first time they'd ever been in a pool of water, you know, and the first time they'd ever go down a water slide. And because even the big kids, they didn't know you could just stand up in the water. Sometimes it was disorienting coming off of the water slide. So they had to like get a little help to get their feet on the ground. And then I forgot to tell them, don't drink the water. <laughs> <laughs> we had our first ever swimming lesson. And I don't know, so many things where whatever was the troubles or problems in my life kind of melted away because I just realized there's so much to be grateful for. You know, so that was a beautiful day here in Nepal. How precious. And I think that's just an example of the things that tend to spill over in your life once you start getting connected with an energy that is bigger than you. And mm -hmm. I think that's what happened for you, Clint, that you were connected with something that you couldn't deny with your own eyes that led you on this journey to doing what you're doing now. So I would love you to just give us a Reader's Digest version of <laughs> the story of how Dr. Naram <laughs> saved your father's life and then blossomed into the work you're doing now. Uh, thank you, Monica. You know, you're, you're so right that it's uh, well beyond me. <laughs> You know, like even even the, the subtitle of the book, it, it says a Western skeptic, an Eastern master and life's greatest secrets. I started so much as a skeptic and so honestly arrogant. And uh, <laughs> and I had a, a Ph.D. and I was a researcher at a university and I was trying to solve all these problems with my mind. And then sometimes we get thrown situations or challenges that we can't solve and that we need to reach for something greater than ourselves. And this was one of those moments when my dad, he called me on the phone and said he needed to meet. And I said, well, I'm your kid. We can just talk on the phone. He says, no, we, I need you to meet me in my office. So that's when I knew something was off. And I remember going to his home, his home office and um, sitting at the chair in the front of his desk, him sitting at the chair to the side of his desk and his eyes were on the ground for a long time. And finally, when he looked up is when he told me, he says, I haven't told your mother and I haven't told your brothers or sisters, but I don't even know if I'm going to live through this week. And I just want someone to know where the loose ends are so your mom doesn't have to worry about it. And uh, man, it's, I just still remember that moment of feeling like a little desperation, you know, and confusion and, you know, feeling like all of the all of the things that mattered, you know, at the university or different things all kind of faded away. And I said, what's happening? And he told me about how he was visiting four of the top doctors who two of them that same month says, we don't know what else to do to help you. He had a high blood pressure. So he was on medication for that high cholesterol on medication for that diabetes medication for that. But the big issue he said was he was in so much pain at night. He felt like someone slammed his entire body against the wall my dad's always been optimistic, always found a positive twist on things. But it was the first time I ever heard him say that he's so much pain that sometimes he didn't know if he wanted to live to see the morning, you know, and uh, depression coming early onset of dementia, so many things. So what do you do? You know, in that particular moment, I told him, I says, you know, I just met this master healer. Well, first of all, I, I said, what, are, what else, what else, are, what else have you tried? You know, I, I met this master healer who says that just from touching your pulse, you know, taking your pulse, he can know what's happening and how to help you. You know, Monica, you mentioned the six secret keys of Siddhaveda. But again, at the time, I was so skeptical. I didn't even know what they were. I didn't have any connection to them. I just knew that I was desperate. 
when I told my dad about this master healer, he did not look interested at all. <laughs> you know, he says, I've already tried homeopathy, reflexology. I tried Chinese medicine. They've all made big promises, but they haven't helped me. You know, I'm still in this situation. So Clint, please just pay attention to where the passwords are. And so we can get through this. So then I tried my best to focus on what he was saying. Finally, at the end of it, I said, Dad, you know, Father's Day is coming up. And I really don't care what you say. I have to do something. So I'm going to fly you to meet this master healer. And that's when my dad cracked a smile and said, well, at least it can't hurt. And then I'm just going to fast forward the story. <laughs> Six months later, I'm sitting in the same office with my dad in the same chairs. And my dad says, I have another big problem. I was like, what is it this time? He said he pulled out the box of medications from behind his desk. He said, and then he just smiled so big. He says, now my problem is I don't know what to do with all these medications. In six months, he'd gone from 12 medications to one. No more high blood pressure, so no more blood pressure medication. No more cholesterol, so no more cholesterol medication. No more diabetes medication. Even his own doctors were the ones that took him off of the medication saying, you don't need this anymore. He had no pain his entire body. No more sleeping pills, no more CPAP machine. His mind was so sharp that he says, now I want to complete my life's work, something I've been working on for 30 years, which is writing this book about how to help kids make good choices. He says, we teach kids what to think, but not how to think. And so can you help me <laughs> finish this book? And that, I was like, that's a way better request than the last one. And so, uh, <laughs> Absolutely. <yeah. laughs> oh, wow. That is just one of the many heartwarming stories that Clint has to share. And what I love, Clint, is that what you represent is something that is accessible world wide because Dr. Naram visited Italy, uh, many other places in Europe and all around the world actually. So I would love you to tell people because there is hope. I, that's the one thing I want people hearing I, I think this. You've got, you got everybody's attention. You have, uh, there is hope the for whatever yeah. your situation is. So yeah. share with us this worldwide community. Yeah, well, I want to say that I, again, I was so skeptical, but when you see something like that happen, especially for someone you love, I mean, I felt like I'd been given a gift worth more than millions of dollars. And so I, I actually went to this master healer. I, I called him and I said, thank you. Thank you for this gift. I want to help you. I want to help make sure people know this is a choice. They may not choose it, but I want to be able to at least know this is an option. And at that point, he laughed. And I was so confused, like, why is he laughing? As I said, well, I know you need help. And he said, yeah, I need help. I, his mission, Dr. Ram says, my mission is that every heart and every home on planet Earth benefits from these ancient secrets. I said, well, then let me help you. He said, no, because I know you now. I was like, what does that mean? He said, I know you and your mind is way too crowded. Even if I told you what these ancient <laughs> secrets are, you try and figure them out with your head instead of <laughs> understand them with your heart. And uh, I was so confused because that was my job as a university researcher. I figure stuff out with my brain. So it says, what do I do? And, and that's when he says, well, two things. And one of them is go for a period of silence. And he, he challenged me to go for 10 days of silence. I don't know if anyone on this call has ever been for that long of silence, but it does something powerful to you or to me and, I, and to everyone I've ever talked to. It's actually one of the most powerful things I think we can do. Mm -hmm. There's a scripture that says, be still and know that I am God. And I used to think it was like God saying, you know, be still down there, everybody. No, I've got this taken care of, you know, but now I think it's like a mathematical equation. You be still and you're going to know God. <laughs> it's inevitable. And uh, I thought, the whole journey was to help my dad with healing, but I didn't know how much healing I needed, you know, until I went to silence and I saw really how crowded my mind was and how many, I saw that most of the things I was doing in life, I was just playing games invented by other people. I saw countries are made up by people. I have a university PhD, but I just played this game. A university was created by people. I played this game and I get this degree. I saw that money is totally invented. It's not a real thing. 
<laughs> and in that silence, I said, what else can we do as humans? What other new things can we invent that are healthier? Instead of just automatically playing these games that other people have invented, what else can we do now with a new awareness of who we are? And actually, I had a secret wish that the whole world would have a chance to go into silence. And then, uh, and then something kind of like that did happen. <laughs> you know? So I was like, I was one of the ones that was very excited when the world slowed down. I was like, yes. And then people say, when are we going to go back to normal? I was like, no, we don't want to go back. Let's go forward. Let's go forward. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's go forward. So let's now move forward because we did have tragically the passing of Dr. Naram. And I know that you felt that deeply. And yet the legacy of his work and his mission is continuing through you, through the book, and through the hundreds of doctors that have studied his method. So what is the moving forward? Mm, yeah, well, when I, when, first of all, when I came out of the silence, I told Dr. Ram, thank you, you know, thank you for that gift. Not only you uh, saved my father's life, but you gave me new life. And now I wanna help. And so for 10 years, I was blessed and honored to travel with this master healer, someone who was the, the, his patients were people like Dalai Lama and Mother Teresa, Nelson Mandela, thousands of 9-11 firefighters and first responders documented thousands and thousands of cases, all with the purpose that people didn't have to come to him, but that they could actually just pick up a book or go online and take a course and discover what are those six secret keys to have vibrant health, unlimited energy and peace of mind. And the whole goal was he, I knew if he had this mission mm. to touch every heart and every home on earth, he couldn't do it meeting with 300 people a day. I did the math, <laughs> it wasn't ever gonna happen. <laughs> and so in the process, we we're all ready to launch the book. And, uh, and then the most unexpected thing happened where he left the body. And uh, you know, honestly, in those moments, I, it was again, it brought me to like actually a pretty dark time. I, mm -hmm. I thought that I had been working this whole time with so much devotion and so much love to do this launch so people would know that he existed, you know, to know that this, that he could do these things, you know, and then he left. And I remember sitting there and I, actually at the time, I don't know if you know, Jack Canfield, he is co-author of Chicken Soup for the Soul. And he was in India uh, undergoing one of the panchakarma, the deep healing processes with his wife, Inga. And I told him, I was like, I think I'm going to go for like a year of silence. And I don't know what I'm going to do next. I don't know if I'm going to publish the book. I don't know what's going to happen. And, you know, I was just in my own kind of depression. And uh, he looked at me really strict and he says, Clint, I've read this book and I know the world does not need your silence now. The world needs your voice now more than ever. And the world needs this book. And so he, he put it in my mind that, okay, at least what I can do is publish this book. Now, the prayer service came for Dr. Naram. And I remember uh, the, that night, I was, again, just like this cloud of depression. And I felt like so much discomfort that I couldn't sleep that night. And I woke up about five, I didn't go to sleep, but I got out of bed about 5 a.m. And I said, I just got to move my body. And I was walking around the streets of Mumbai. And I remember just feeling like someone was following me. And I looked and I couldn't see anyone. And finally, I look and I look down and there's this dog following me. And I was like, that's so weird. So Dr. Naram, he was so soft on almost everything, but he was really strict that if a stray animal, a homeless person, someone came we always had to give them something. There's a principle, one of the secrets, actually one of the three secrets I wanted to share is called Atiti Devo Bawa. You treat the unexpected guest as if God himself or herself has come. And, you know, I just was speaking so much, but is it okay if I share this story really briefly? Yes, please. So in my depression or in that cloud of confusion, all of a sudden this dog shows up and I said, okay, at least I can... In honor of Dr. Naram, I can feed this dog. So I waited until it was morning. I got some food. I put it down, and he didn't eat it. And I'm like, he just looking at me, looked at the food, sniffed it, and looked back at me. And I'm like, what do you want? What do you want? 
So I left him and he followed me for almost one, two hours as I'm wandering the streets of Mumbai, this dog just followed me around. And then I finally went to the home of Dr. Naram where his son was there. And in the process of like him following me, it brought, it reminded me of so many secrets that Dr. Naram taught that I was too arrogant or too hard headed to see in the moment. And I was writing them all down and I started the depression faded away as I was like feeling more and more awe. I remember I did a Facebook live video with this dog just so I could share some of the things that I was discovering, rediscovering in my heart. When we finally got to the home of Dr. Naram, I said to Dr. Naram's son, Krishna, I was like, look at this happening. I don't know how to explain it, but it's like a, it's a miracle. And so it, at that home, we had dog food and he started eating the dog food. Now, <laughs> Jack Canfield's wife, Inga, says, you know, the name you should call this dog is Milo, because you found him when you're at your low, Milo, and he mm -hmm. reminded you of your love, my love. And this dog, okay, I just shared this part real briefly, because it kind of gives the whole context. That night, he's still following me. I was like, what do I do? And so I went to my apartment and I just says, thank you so much for giving me the gift of your presence today. I, I don't know how to thank you enough. And if I see you tomorrow, I'd be happy. But if I don't ever see you again, I just want to make sure I say thank you. And I shut the door. He started barking at my apartment complex, waking people up. So I opened the door again. I put a blanket out. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. Aditi Deva Baba, treat the unexpected guests as if God himself or herself has come. So I put a blanket down. I was like, here's a blanket. If you want to stay here, I'd be so happy to see you tomorrow. But if you don't, I just want to say thank you for being in my life. I shut the door. He started barking <laughs> So then I'm like, okay, if I'm really going to treat this as if the unexpected guest is God, I probably wouldn't leave God to sleep on the doorstep. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I so hesitantly opened my door and he went straight into my apartment. Now, it's a street dog in Mumbai. Like people are scared of street dogs. So I'm not sure if he's going to pee on stuff, bite the fur. I don't know what's going to happen, but it was an experiment. And so then I even go to shut the door of my room to go to sleep and he would bark again. And I'm like, okay, shh, what do you want? The only way he would sleep is if he was right next to my bed with my hand on his head. <laughs> <laughs> and then that next day is when all the airports closed. And for seven months, the airports were closed and I couldn't leave India and this dog was my companion. And, uh, and actually my companion in launching not only the book, but because of his presence, many people were watching the Facebook live videos. The next day we went to the clinic. I called an Uber and he hopped on my lap in the Uber. I don't know what he's gonna do. Hops on my lap and for 40, 30 minute, 45 minute drive sitting on my lap to the clinic. <laughs> We get to the clinic, he goes straight to the door where Dr. Naram was, where he would see people. Actually, first of all, I'll show you the, the picture of Milo. So here, here is this beautiful dog, Milo. Mm. <laughs> and then this is the next, the very second day at the clinic of Dr. Naram. He goes in, sees the picture of Dr. Naram with the Dalai Lama, and then sits down on the floor like he belongs there. <laughs> The staff saw my video before, the Facebook Live before, a video before they came in, tears were in their eyes. I did another Facebook Live video. And then afterwards, I, I shut the door and I just meditated there. And I remember the whole journey with Dr. Naram and that the most important thing about the ancient secrets isn't about making you dependent on anyone. It's about making you independent. And yeah, I even gave this book recently, actually, I didn't give it to her, but someone else gave it to her to a a beautiful Hollywood star who says the favorite thing she loves about this is it always points you back to yourself. It says, what do you want? And it teaches you all the principles where you can be independent, <laughs> you know? And I, I thought that's the whole reason I was attracted to Dr. Rob in the first place it was because he was so humble and so loving. And the most, this is another miracle or amazing miracle is this day in which this broadcast is happening is actually Dr. Ram's birthday, May 4th. Oh, <laughs> you guys didn't know that, and I didn't no. know it, but it just feels to me like his ancient secrets having that much closer to going in every heart and every home. And so thank you for <laughs> making that part happen. That is so incredible. <sighs> and I have to say, I never do a live candle on the table. And no, I have actually got candles mm -hmm. here lit 
And I had no idea that it would be Dr. Naram's birthday. <laughs> let's keep them lit for the whole month yeah I'd like, i think i'd like that yeah that's i mean that, every show that let's is truly that. truly amazing i think my favorite quote from the book is i didn't come to teach you i came to love you <laughs> and love will teach mm -hmm. you and i just want to say that you embody everything that Dr. Nam was here to do for us. So thank you so much for everything that you've done. Can we talk about the resources, uh, yeah. websites, so, so people can really see this? You, you know, in half an hour, we don't really get the full story. That's so right. So can where can this. people go, Clint, to get more? Mm. Yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. You know, first of all, when Milo showed up, before the book was even published, I started, I said, you know, People want to experience miracles and or things that look like miracles. Dr. Alm would always say it's actually based on an ancient science, but to you, it looks like a miracle. So I started something informally. I put it out on Facebook. I was like, who wants to do a game, an experiment with me? And we called it the miracle experiment game in which you would just apply three principles from the book and you see what kind of miracles happen in your life. And I thought maybe 10, 15 people would sign up, but we had over 300 people sign up from all over the world. And the coolest miracles started to happen, financial miracles and health miracles, relationship miracles. One man who had been uh, estranged from his, his child for over 10 years, they reunited again and such a beautiful healing happened. A boy who hadn't talked to his mom in more than six years. All of a sudden, the healing happened and the reconnection happened. So many things that, you know, forgiveness and uh, so many beautiful things happened. And so I thought, why don't we do this again? So we started another one called the Global Healing Miracle Experiment. And that one, over 1,500 people <laughs> participated. And through that is when someone in the, in, the, in the call says, we need to translate this book. And so all of a sudden, within two weeks, we had people translating in over 30 languages and it was so humbling to see that, uh, you know, Dr. Ram may not be here in physical form, but definitely his spirit is moving things forward in a way that's well beyond anything I could think of. And so the gift that actually we have for people, or, do you want me to talk about the gift? Yes, please, should, please, yeah. please, please, please yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so first of all, there's so many remedies for if you have you know, arthritis, or you have high blood pressure, or you have, you want more energy, or you want more peace, more calm in your mind, you want to boost your immunity. So many of those remedies are in there. It's like a Bible of home remedies. So we want to make sure you have those as a gift. And so we're going to create a way. So that way, if you, even if you don't get the book, you're in an area of the world, for whatever reason, you can't get it. You have those. So that's a gift we want to give everyone. But also for those that want to play this game, they want to do this miracle experiment experience. We have a special discount code where I think it's a, a huge discount. And I just want to play this game with as many people as possible. And you see for yourself, you apply the principles, those three secrets, and see what kind of miracles happen in your life. Now, what is the web, because we're almost out of time, the website that they can go to? Well, I would encourage everyone to go visit myancientsecrets.com. Dot com. That is the overarching website for mm -hmm. a lot of Clint's work, myancientsecrets.com. Now, for the free gift that Clint is talking about, we are putting that in the chat window for you to see. If you are watching this in your membership portal, for those who are members, scroll down below, you'll see Clint's biography, and then underneath that, you'll have the link to the free gift as well as the promotional code. So... Uh, is there any last words you want to share with us, Clint? Yeah, I just want to say thank you. You know, not only both uh, Lee and Monica, you are so, it just lights me up when I see you. It makes me so happy. But also your community. When I was on the program last time, people came from all over the world. I was just in India and I saw two people from Denmark, two beautiful people. It's like wherever I go now. I'm surrounded by a bubble of love. You know, people have helped with the final translations of the book in Spanish, finding out how they can help with German. I met people in Italy that <laughs> know, know and love you. And I, don't, I just want to say this is one of the most beautiful, loving, conscious communities that I've ever Aww. seen or been associated with. Thank and you. so whatever you're doing, I just want to say thank you. 
What, I'll tell you what we're doing. We're, we're having you on our show is what we're doing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. And this is, this is, will not be the only time we see you. So till next time. And, uh, maybe the next time you're on the show, you're a lot more people are seeing you now than even saw you the first time. So things are going to happen. Yeah. We love you so much. Thank you for joining us. We are out of time, unbelievably, and we're going to take a 10-minute break, and then we'll see you all back here for the Circle of Twelve.
Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back. I am still buzzing because every time we get together with Clint Rogers, it's I just feel so much love emanating from him. It's true. And we've just uh, fallen in love with him so many, in so many ways. Yes. He's such a, a magnificent man and a, a, a wonderful healer. Exactly. And yeah. we're so blessed. I have a prediction. I think his work and his book is going to explode even more. So we have been truly blessed that he's actually had the time for us to do this interview with us. Because I have a feeling his requests are going to come in thick and fast from all over the he's world. All, he, and he is all over the world. Yes. We, you know, this Zoom came from uh, Nepal. Yes. And last time we talked to him on Zoom, it was Italy. And then we have um, emails that he comes from other places. <laughs> we can't believe where he is. Exactly. So he's everywhere. He's doing such a good work. Him and the whole team that he's oh, behind. There are so yeah. many people within his community that can help you. So I encourage you, if you are in trouble, go and check it out. Well, this program is all about healing. And it's again time to do what we are calling miracle moments. So mm. we really want to honor all those who really need a healing right now in whatever form. Mm. And we're inviting you to participate in this week's Miracle Moments, where all of us can come together to help others and ourselves. I'd like to ask Monica to explain how we do this, how it works, but we know together that we can create the right energy at the right time for those who are ready to receive it. Now, our members have a place where they can submit a request for a prayer or healing energy, and we are inviting you now to join with me to send healing energy to those who have specifically made those requests. Now, in addition, we know that there are people on this planet who are also in desperate need of this healing energy and love and would never even think to make a request. But here's the thing, spirit knows who they are. Our loving creator knows who they are. It may even be you who have tuned in to this program where you are in fact needing some healing energy, some love to be sent your way. And so I'm inviting everyone to, to participate in sending energy and love to create a miracle moment for those who are requesting it to happen. And so with that invitation, I invite you to join me in Send some love, compassion, healing energy out into the field so that those requesting it can feel that wave of love emanating from us, descending down upon them. And as we amplify this field of love that we are creating, I now invite you to consider all of the friends and relatives connected to those who have submitted this request of receiving unconditional love, compassion, healing energy. And just visualize a blanket being sent around the world and it slowly descends and wraps around those who are in need. And as we continue amplifying this wave of love that we are building and creating, I invite you to consider those beautiful, precious children whose parents have been requesting healing energy to be sent to their beautiful, precious children. We send them our love, compassion, healing energy. And let us extend that to all children on the planet right now whose primary role is to just exist in love and joy and happiness. Let us send all children everywhere a wave of love, compassionate energy, healing energy. And I would like to remind you, as this wave keeps building, that you are included. And so allow yourself in this moment 
to also receive that blanket of love that is being generated and sent around the planet. Allow yourself to receive that love and know that the more you are able to receive it, the greater you can amplify that and send it back out in an infinity loop. And let us not forget the precious animals on the planet, some of which have come to be with the beloved humans that choose to be with them. Some of those animals are in distress and need our help. And so visualize sending love, compassionate energy, healing energy to the beloved pets that are in distress and need help right now. We just send love back to them as they give to us. And let us extend that wave to give gratitude and thanks and love to all animals that we share this beautiful planet with. And we acknowledge and thank our partner, Gaia. And we acknowledge and thank our partner, the Creator. And so with this energetic posture, we are ready to come a little closer to cry on. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon. Come a little closer. This is the Circle of Twelve. It's a time of meditation, visualization if you wish to, or simply to sit and be loved and listen. It's always about human empowerment and the love for you and your soul. Always. They would say, from many, they would say, what is the purpose, crying? What is the agenda here? Everyone has an agenda. Let me tell you. Let me, let me ask you to judge the agenda. I want you to feel love from God, from yourself, from all of those around you who are esoteric and invisible, some of whom you don't even believe in. There are so many more. That's the agenda. That's it. Self-discovery has been the agenda for these last months. Last month I gave you numbers of channels, numbers of circles of 12. This is a special one. So many people are seeing it. So I have, I have wanted to make this one different, a little different. It's like some of the others because it has to do with timing. Now we continue speaking of timing and cycles because there are so many layers to these. Some have called it drilling down into a more specific attribute of the same teaching. And that's what we're doing. So some of you have, have, have heard this kind of thing before. In fact, several weeks ago, I sat in front of a live group, of, a group of individuals who had come for a live circle of 12. And I gave them this meditation. Now I'm going to give it to you. This one is esoteric. It is hard to imagine, to believe. And so we ask you to become multidimensional just for a moment. And what that truly means is anything goes when it comes to that which you don't believe. Now that's a tough one. It's tough for a human being to set aside linearity, for instance, where perhaps things float around you because gravity is not there or the timing is not there or your clock stops. It's a unique thing, multidimensionality, and it is the way of things in the universe, but not where you are on your planet. You are linear. That has to be the way it is so that you can make the decisions of light and dark, change that which is the attributes of your planet. And that's what you're here for, old soul. But this particular exercise, this meditation, takes you across a bridge, if you wish to, to visualize that or pretend. And in that, 
something different happens. And that's the reason we take you across that bridge. It's a demarcation for your own linearity to say, turn the page, open the door, we're going to do something different. And when we do that difference, it's like suddenly you're going into a dream state or suddenly you're, you're watching a, a movie or perhaps reading a book where everything is different and you, you buy into that difference because it's a story that is a parable. It's a metaphor. And that particular attribute that we're doing today is the story or the book or the movie, whatever you want to pretend about the real you. You see, where you are right now is the linear you. That's the one that comes and goes and comes and goes on this planet. And you call it life on earth. I've told you so many times. You have had so many lives, so many lives, not on earth. This is what you do, old soul. New souls who are watching, and I know you're there, I want you to understand how valued you are. That perhaps this time around you'll see it, but right now perhaps it seems odd or strange, and you don't want to, you don't want to listen much because something's not right, you might say. And what's not right is, your, is, is you haven't lived long enough to accept this. But you will. There are some new souls that are being born right now that are different, that have been brought here to listen because these new souls are aware they're new and at the same time they recognize this energy. Children do, you know. Before you're six, you all know about this energy and somehow life trains you out of it or your parents talk you out of it or your friends talk you out of it. But you know where you've come from. And you also know that there's life after death. That's intuitive information. I want about I want to talk about this this life you exist that you're that you're existing in right now. This that this your life. Not a future life, not a past life, but I want to talk about the beginning of this life. Now you've heard me do this before, but let's do it together. Take my hand right now and let's cross this bridge. Moving through the mist that obfuscates what's coming, a metaphor for going into a land that's so different you can't even visualize it or see it. And there you are. Wherever this is you want to be, you've all had dreams. And you know in dreams, nothing makes sense. And it may not make sense here. Even what I'm going to tell you, I'll use words that don't make sense, perhaps. Because you have no model in your linearity that matches what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to take you to when you decided to come to the planet and be born. Come with me through a door. And this door, you might say, is a portal, and we use that word loosely. That is something that you understand. A portal is often a focus point that's spiritual. And so today it's a door and you're going through it. None of those things truly are accurate. Not in multidimensionality, but for you, you need to paint a picture, and that's the picture, a door. But over the name, over the door, there is a name, and this one is very easily readable. And it says, Heroes enter here. Another one that you'll run across is Heroes in the Making. And you go right through it. And I'll show you and tell you why. Come with me for a moment to something that some of you cannot visualize and cannot imagine. So pretend for a moment you're watching a movie or you're reading an adventure book and there are souls waiting to come into this planet the day you were born. You're one of them. And when you come in, you're very aware that you're coming into an old energy worth earth that may very well change an old energy earth that might change in either direction light or dark that's when you were born because when most of you were born who are listening to this there was still a chance that this would be the end of civilization now why would I say that Look at all of the predictions from your scriptures. 
Take a look. It said, within that which you call the 2000s, starting in the year 2000, you may have what was described as the end of the world, the Armageddon. There are more predictions of that than anything else that you can find. Not only that, there's so many of your, your, your movies and your novels and all that had it happen. And that's, that's the, 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 I would say, the storyline. Take a look. Even today, that's the storyline. So ingrained in humanity was it that you all expected it. And it didn't happen. But you didn't know that when you came in. That was the biggest potential. Are you listening? That was the biggest potential. As you stood there, as a soul about to come into this planet, you had chosen your family. We've talked about that. We've chosen your gender. We talked about that. We talked about the timing of your incarnations. We've talked about that. There you are standing ready to go into that, which we'll even call the birth canal or the wind of birth we've often mentioned. That's a metaphor the wind of love which you're about to step into which takes you right to the planet to start another life and you're all very aware of what's going on where you are the timing of it and what might happen and you came anyway you came anyway you want to be more graphic with this old soul as you are listening to me I was there And you knew it. You may be stepping into a world where you, your family, everything you love would be incinerated in World War III. And you looked into it and you said, I'll take a chance because I'm an old soul and I know that there's an opportunity with the precession of a shift. And if we don't destroy ourselves, I want to be there. I want to be there for the shift because I've got something to contribute. Light, high consciousness, I'm going in. Is this dramatic for you? Is it too dramatic for you? Is it, is it, it a laughable adventure? That's what you did. That's what you did. Heroes, everyone, you came into this place called Earth where you're sitting right now with the knowledge that horror might occur in your life. And you came anyway. And then you wonder, why it is the spirit has accolades for you or loves you the way we do that's now you know now you know there's so much more to you than you've ever been told the beginning even before you ever got here the timing is spectacular we're going to talk about it even more about that's what you what you had in the past perhaps or or I'll even give it away. Perhaps you even died early so you could come back at this time, the last incarnation. We'll talk about that. But for now, I want you to just think on these things, standing there at the wind of birth, ready to come into the earth at the minute you were born, timing perfectly, the astrology you needed for you, perfect, and knowledge that you might not make it. I want to celebrate all of you because you did make it and this is the shift and now a whole nother energy of the planet begins and you are in it. This is a spectacular time where you will be part of a victory of light, a big victory. It's going to take a while. It's going to take longer than you want. It is quite slow, two steps forward, one step back. But at every step, you will see a different planet today than, than the last time you were here, or even, even if you measure 20 years ago, perhaps, or, or even 50 if you're a senior. You'll know it's very different today. Even as the population increases, it's an oxymoron. It should get worse. Dear ones, light makes a difference. Awareness, compassion, love. That's why we love you the way we do. I want you to ponder this love and I want you to stay right here. Stay and just think about it. Sit and be loved as we love you. Just sit there and think about how much you are loved. I'm 
trillions in the universe who know what you've done and why and are watching and loving and helping. And so it is.